Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and finally spring has arrived so I need to get this tractor ready for the season on the farm. And getting the tractor ready actually means to change the oil on the engine, on the gearbox, on the hydraulics, change the air filter and the fuel filters and then grease all the nipples. And the David Brown is probably one of the best tractors I have ever seen. Uh, this one is 51 years old and you can just crank it up. It lasts and lasts forever. And the good thing about it is there are no electronics gadgets on it like on modern uh, tractors or any other machine today. Uh, you can fix everything. No secret passwords or codes you need, no special tools. So this is really great to work on tractors like this. And by the way, David Brown was also the guy who actually built the Aston Martin. So the David Brown 990 uh, and also his companions, the 880s and the 1200s, they are all kind of the same, has a diesel engine fitted. Now this one is a four cylinder diesel. It doesn't have the wet sleeves like the previous model. So the liners are fixed, so the sleeves are fixed, so you can't take them out. Uh, it has a displacement of 3.2 liters and I think this is around 187 cubic inches. Not a hell of a lot, but it still develops 55 horsepower. And that is not a lot in today's norms. However, it has a 12 speed gearbox. So there's a lot of torque on that gearbox. Uh, the PTO as well delivers around 54 uh, horsepower. So that is pretty good. Um, it's driven by a CAV rotary diesel pump and uh, it doesn't need a lot of maintenance to be very honest. It also is fitted with a hydraulics pump, uh, but this is not on the motor, this is in the back uh, where the gearbox is. And the hydraulics pump uh, is delivering around 100 and I think uh, 37 kilograms uh, or bar, which is not a lot or 2000 PSI. Uh, but the volume is a little bit on the low side, I think it's 7.6 gallons per minute um, or 23 liters per minute that is not a lot of um, pressure and volume to drive today's hydraulics but okay it, it is what it is and and you might see me doing some additional work in an upcoming video when we putting a new hydraulics attachment to it I might have to fit an external pump but that's going to come in the next videos and as you can see I've taken the bonnet or the hood off the tractor so it makes it a bit easier to work on but there's another reason I did this um, because I have to mount the hatch trimmer in front of the tractor I still will have to build the brackets in the front here so that's why I had to take it off anyway so uh, that's the reason why you see the bonnet being removed because you don't need to remove the bonnet actually to work on the engine to change the oil or the fuel filters or even the air filter there is no need to do that because you have access to it by actually removing a grill in the front and on the sides you have four legs anyway so let me show you that hatch trimmer because I mentioned that and where we're going to mount it. But that's going to be for another video. But I still want to show that to you so you know uh, what we are up to in the next coming videos. You might remember from a previous video that we were having this Chinese hatch trimmer and that's the one where we had some issues with. Um, it was a bit flaky, very hard to control. And we know that the uh, valve block here isn't working all that great, especially not with this cable driven controls. I mean, this is pretty cheap stuff. So it's not surprised that it's not working too well. So we're going to change all that in the next video. But the point is that I want to mount this whole unit in the front of the David Brown tractor. So all the way on the nose. And that's also why I have actually now removed the hood because that's going to be the next thing I'm going to do in a video for you with a new valve block, with new joysticks, electrical joysticks to control uh, this hatch trimmer. So, uh, that's coming up very soon anyway, and after that, I have some more old rusty movies. But let's go and start to change the oil. The engine takes about 10 quarts of oil, and I'm always putting in 15W40, but I'll come back to that. 
I'm changing it about every 125 hours and uh, I'm changing the oil filter which is fitted right here in this enclosure and for that you just need to undo this bolt and then the whole thing comes off and inside you will actually find the oil filter and this is the new oil filter that will fit. I'm changing this about every 258 hours. Now the oil I'm changing as well every year even if I don't have 125 hours of service. Um, but don't take the oil filter off uh, before you have drained the oil out of the sump. Um, I will also take off the sump uh, today and I'll show you where the mesh filter is that is actually in front of the oil pump because that often gets clogged up over all the years. I haven't done it on this tractor so I hope it's still there because I did not own this tractor from new. And filling the tractor with fresh oil is pretty straightforward. There's a filling cap right in the front just behind the radiator and you can just actually remove it and then fill it up with fresh oil. And if you want to check the oil there is a dipstick on the side like on most old tractors and you can check the marking on it. Let me wipe off the oil and you can see a low and a high mark and that's all there is to it. And while we are changing the oil in the engine, we are also going to change the oil in the air filter. Now this may sound very weird to you because an air filter with oil is not that common. But it was common on these tractors and other tractors. In fact, a lot of heavy machinery has that kind of wet filters as we call them. On the bottom you have a pot of oil and you actually have air coming in through the top ducting so air is sucked in at a, certain, at a certain speed and the heavy particles they will go straight down because of the velocity and they're going to hit the surface of this oil and they will get stuck in the oil. So typically you will find a pretty big smudge inside after a while and all you need to do is just wash this out and put fresh oil in it. Very handy. Now on this tractor I think there's something really cute. Um, you can see the air intake and the return which is going back to the engine seems to be going to the radiator. You see how that goes into the radiator and then back out and then it goes to the intake manifold? Well in essence it is not going inside the radiator it's just a feed through. I, I think this is really weird I have never seen that before uh, that they're feeding a air hose through the radiator. I don't know exactly why, uh, maybe it had a reason, maybe it preheats the air a bit, don't know. Anyway, uh, it is what it is. The oil that I'm using for the tractor for both the gearbox, the hydraulics and the engine is actually Tractor Elf um, ST3 and I'm using a viscosity of 15 W40. Now I know that's not the standard viscosity that they recommend in the manuals. So 15 W40 oil is a bit thicker than the standard oil they actually prescribe for these tractors. Typically you would see a 10 W30. Of course it all depends a bit where you live but the climate I live in I think the 15 W40 specifically made for tractors is a much better choice. Now the first number, the 15, talks about the viscosity or how liquid is the oil when the engine is cold and the second number is when the engine is hot so when the oil is at operating temperature. So the higher the number is the less viscosity so the thicker the oil will be. Uh, the lower the number the more liquid the uh, oil will be. So I don't want to have a too liquid oil in this tractor. It's an older tractor, it has wear and tear on it so it can benefit from a little bit thicker oil. First things first, drain the oil sump and make sure that you have a container which is big enough. Uh, I'm using an old plastic container where I cut out a piece uh, and that certainly is going to be able to contain uh, the 10 quarts of oil or the about 7.8 liters of oil that's going to come out of the oil sump. So I'm using a socket 20, now it may be different on yours, there we go. And um, it's always good if the engine is a little bit warm to do this. Uh, in my case it's not, and, but we'll see. You 
can see on the color that it's about time that we're actually going to change it because it's pretty nasty. Well, it looks like the sump plug is still all right, but it had better days. And farmers are quite often inventive. So I think what happened is they had actually worn out the grabbing area of the nut or the inbus, and then they welded on a nut on top of it. That's the way people do it sometimes. And like I said, farmers are very inventive people. So the next thing to do is to remove the oil filter while the oil pan is still dripping. So I'm going to place a piece of cloth here just to catch most of the oil. Don't know how much is going to come out of it. Now the nut on this one is a 5 8. As you can see it's not very tight. So let's see how easy it's going to be to get this off. Well, let's see if we can get this guy off. And as you can see, there's still a whole bunch of oil coming out of it. So that's why this is a greasy job, guys. Keep that in mind. But as we are grease monkeys, we don't mind this, do we? And we're also going to clean out a little bit the whole surface of the filter. And for that, I'm just using some brake cleaner. It evaporates very quickly and it cleans quite nice. Now inside you will see a rubber seal and you need to replace that rubber seal and this is the new seal that will have to go in. And it's always good to check before you remove things that you have the right spare. So let us remove that seal and see uh, how easy it is. it is to get it out. A little pin like this always helps. There we go. And before we put the new seal up, I'm going to put some oil on it. And this is just normal engine oil. Uh, it's always good practice to do that. All right. It should go in quite easily. And here is our old filter, so we're going to take that out. Now let's see what the state of this filter is. And this seems to be stuck a little bit. There we go. I got it. Um, so there's no particular direction you have to put it in. So let me dispose of this ugly filter and I put it in there. And now, of course, we have a, still a whole bunch of oil inside, which I'm going to get rid of. So uh, I have poured out the oil, or as much as I could. There's still a bit in it. There we go. And now we're going to clean that up completely, because I don't like to work on dirty stuff. So let us wash this out first with some gasoline or some other degreaser, if you have one. And don't forget, before you're changing things out, always check the old part towards the new part. Uh, this is the old filter, this is the new filter, and they look exactly the same. Also check the openings and make sure you have the seals on the new one on both sides. So let's clean up this guy, and you may not have a part washer, but that's okay. You can do it with the brush and some gasoline or some petrol. Whatever works for you. I've been doing this for a long time without a, a, a part washer like this, uh, but I do find this very handy. I'm going to let it sit on the side and drip out. We're also going to clean out the air filter because there's a lot of oil inside. Now to do so, you need to remove these clips and then the thing comes out. But be careful because this whole thing is filled up with oil. So hopefully we can get it off in a proper way. All right. And inside the oil can, you actually have this meshed wire and this is the real filter. Uh, I already took it out. You may have to prime it out with a screwdriver uh, to get it out, but it's, it's easy to get it out. And now we can actually um, clean all that up. So after you've given the filter a good wash, uh, it's time to blow it out and try to blow it out in the opposite direction of the airflow. So the airflow is from the bottom to the top. So we're going to blow this direction. That's
so when everything is cleaned up, we're going to fill the air filter up to this level right here. And it says exact oil level, so don't make it any higher than that. And I already put something in on the sides, and if you put it on the sides, you will see it will come through the little holes on the side. But in fact, everything should be filled up also, the middle part. So let us fill that up and see until what moment in time we have reached that level, the exact level. Okay, let's stick it in. There we go, so the filter is ready to be installed. So before we put the filter up, I always tend to spray a little bit the maze here with some oil. And now we can actually install the filter. Make sure that you don't tilt it because otherwise you will spill all the oil. That's all there is to it. So we did drain the oil on, out of the oil pan. We have removed the oil filter and we actually have renewed and cleaned out the air filter. But I'm not going to put the new oil into the engine right away because I still want to take off the oil pan or the oil sump to check that filter on the oil pump. So let's do that first. The next thing we're going to do is to take the carter pan off and this is about 18 bolts we need to undo. And then we can see what the status is inside the carter pan and the mesh that is uh, filtering out the oil before it gets into the uh, oil pump. So that's going to be a little bit of bolting. Ah! I'm not going to keep you guys busy watching this because that's going to be pretty boring. Ah! Unfortunately, I think the steel will be gone. So this is the zift that is filtering the oil going into the oil pump. And I'm going just to undo this and then clean it out. All right. Here we go. Now let's clean it up. Here is a piece of debris. You can see that. And there's more on it. Um, these are small metal particles. God knows how long, but that's what I'm cleaning it. So I'm just going to use a kind of a degreaser just to degrease it. I have cleaned up the filter and as you can see nothing is clogged anymore so now that's ready to go back on. So this is the oil pan and you can see the compartments that is just to make sure that the crankshaft is getting oiled enough. But if you look inside you're going to see a lot of debris. Let me scrape some out. See that? Now on this one right here it's even worse and I'm just going to take some out. There you go, see how thick that is. Changing the oil is one thing. Changing the oil filter is another good thing. But very seldom we forgot to clean out the oil pan every so often. And as you could see on this one, it's really dirty. Look at all that, how much crap that is inside. So I'm going to clean this up and then I'm going to reinstall the oil pan and the little meshed filter in front of the oil pump. So let me clean all this up and then I'll be right back with you. So this is the sump now all cleaned up and in between those compartments we have these dividers and underneath you should have a passage, see? So that is important for the oil to distribute properly within the oil pan. There we go and so let's see if we can get the sump back on. That's one. We're going to put a second one up on the other side so it can't move anymore. Now with the camera in the way, it's not always that easy. So let me finish that one up and then we continue. So, so far we have cleaned up the filter housing. We put a new seal up. I'm having the new filter ready to be installed. That's what we do next. And we already cleaned out the sump and mounted it back onto the um, engine block. And of course, we also installed the little mace uh, that protects the breed getting into the fuel pump. And as you could see, it was more than necessary. So the next step is to install the oil filter. 
And then finally, we will fill up the engine with fresh oil. I have resprayed actually the oil filter cover. Not that this is a concourse tractor because this is a working tractor, but since I had the chance to clean it all up, I did. Uh, so now I'm gonna rub in some oil onto those rubber seals on the new filter. And this is just ordinary engine oil. I'm gonna make sure everything is very clean. And then all we need to do is put it inside. And bolt it down. You know this is slightly spring-loaded. But you gotta make sure that the housing fits inside the area where that seal was replaced in. So make sure all around. Don't over tighten the things and just tighten it enough but not too hard. You can always retighten it if you see some leaks, but we shouldn't see any. All right, and that's it. And I'm gonna put the date up so I know when I did it. So now we're gonna fill up the engine with 10 quarts or 7.6 liters of oil. So here we go. And I need to get it a bit of air. So one big cup is five liters. Uh, so I'll have to have one big cup and a half and that should be all the oil we're gonna need. Okay, so let's fill it up. All right, let's just clean the spill. So that should be enough. And let's check it. Mm, I see. So we are slightly over it, but that's okay because we still have to fill up the oil filter and there's no oil around the engine. So I just filled it up with 10 quarts and that should be good enough. So now we're going to change the diesel filters. Now this is a diesel and I have a primary filter and a secondary filter. The primary filter, this is something I change about every 500 hours. The secondary filter probably about every 800 to 1,000 hours because that doesn't get that polluted because it's already been pre-filtered by the first one. And of course, uh, once we've done that, we will have to prime or we will have to bleed the system. And bleeding it is very easy. We'll uh, open up this nut there on the top. So let the air out and then we'll pump it up with the diesel pump. And then uh, we close it up again and then we move to the um, diesel pump, uh, the injection pump, which is right here. And this is a CAV pump. It's a rotative pump. And then we go into, first of all, on the housing of the pump, open up this bleed hole. And then afterwards, we'll do it on the top here and open up that bleed hole while we keep pumping uh, fuel in. Now, normally, I don't think I will have to bleed the pump because the filters are high up. So I'm not gonna lose uh, diesel in it, but sometimes the filters are lower and then you have to bleed. So let's uh, start removing this. It is only a bolt in the top that I need to undo and then the whole thing comes down. I'm going to put some plastic up here so I don't want to get the diesel all over the place. So let me do that first. Oh, and by the way, uh, these are the new cartridges that are going in. Uh, what you see here are actually cartridges. This is a new cartridge. This is the filter. So you can take those out. Uh, this, this will stay. This is the housing and they will come down and then you can take the cartridge out and then put a new one in. And it comes with rubber seals as always. Um, here you go. These are the seals that come with it. So don't forget to put those up. Uh, but we'll do that in a few seconds. So, and you might want to lock down the fuel coming into the fuel pump uh, because otherwise it may be streaming out. So let's undo the little bolt on the top and then the filter should come off. I was hoping I could do it with my finger, but no such luck. You can already see some diesel coming out of it. You're always going to have some leaking, so that's why I have a cloth underneath. I might want to take a bucket. Wow, let me show you something how bad this is, right? 
So have a look guys, uh, see the filter? Was it necessary to change it? I would say yes, it's bloody awful. So I cleaned the, the housing of that filter and you've seen how dirty it was. So if you're going to put it up, there is a seal that goes on the bottom, like so. Then the filter goes on with the smooth surface on the bottom. So it fits like this. Text always readable upwards. And then you have another seal that goes on the top and that goes actually inside the housing that still is on the tractor. And then where the um, rod fits to the uh, opening, there's another little seal that you need to put up. So these are all the seals you're gonna need and don't forget to do this because otherwise you will have a leak. So remember to put the seal in the cover. Also remember to put the other seal in the top cover and have the little seal actually on the little stud inside. It was a bit hard to show that to you, but I, I think you got the understanding on how that's supposed to be, right? So let's see if we can get this guy installed. I think we can. It looks like there's still some fuel coming out of the uh, valve and it isn't fully closed so that's why you see that fuel still coming. But all right, here we are. Um, and that should now be almost right. So you see, uh, it already stopped leaking. All right, so let's lock that in place. And again, don't over tighten it, make it hand tight. and see if you have any leaks or not. So there we go. So that's the first filter. So now we will do the second filter. We installed both the filters, the pre-filter and the secondary filter. The David Brown tractor is an amazing tractor. I mean, if you look at these filters, how dirty they are, and this thing kept on running. It's kind of amazing. And it starts immediately, it always did even though the filters are really clogged up and real dirty. So this was the primary one and now it took a lot of dirt off. And this is the secondary one, which also has dirt on it. So now the tractor should be really be good. So now we need to uh, bleed the system. Now, I don't think I need to bleed a lot on the uh, injection pump itself, but we'll have to bleed for sure uh, the two filters. And there's a bleeding bolt on the top here. That's the one we need to release. And then we're going to pump uh, on, on the lever on the manual fuel pump until we have fuel coming out here and no more air bubbles and right now as you can see nothing comes out so I'm going to go to the other side and keep pushing until fuel comes out And since I'm on my own, there is no way for me to do this. So, you know, I need to spill a, a bit of fuel on the ground and that's okay, we'll clean it all up. There we go, and we lock it. We cleaned the oil sump, we have a new oil filter, we cleaned the air filter, we filled up the engine with oil, so that should all be good. And we replaced the two fuel filters and we have been bleeding the system. So now let's see if we can crank it up. If I can't crank it up, then I probably have to bleed the pump. But let's see. How easy that will go. Now that is pretty amazing, isn't it? Right away this tractor starts. You want to do a check to see if you have no leaks, and that looks all right. So, uh, I guess that's going to be it for this video. Uh, so, I hope you enjoyed this video. The next video is going to be all about the hydraulic system and changing the filters on the hydraulic system and putting new oil in the hydraulic system and the gearbox. Initially, I planned to do it on in this session, but this video is going to be too long otherwise. So. I'll see you in my next video and give me a like if you like it, give me a thumbs down if you think something is wrong, but tell me what is wrong so I can correct myself next time. 
Thank you for viewing and have a great day. Bye-bye.